The idea of a library containing every book ever written, is being written and will ever be written is a spark of genius from Jorge Luis Borges in his short story The Library of Babel. He tells us a story of a universe made up of tessellating hexagonal rooms, each with four walls containing books, and each book containing 410 pages. The premise of the story is that the library holds every single permutation of a given character set within the limits of the page. So in theory, given a very large number of rooms, the library must contain a lot of nonsensical gibberish, but also within it every meaningful text that was ever and will be created. I believe Jonathan Basil was the first to implement this thought experiment to reality in his site libraryofbabble.info. His site does exactly what Louis Borges told in fiction. He searched for a text and the program returns the exact location of that page within the library. It's like asking a librarian for where a book is and they point you to the exact shelf. Now it's not all that impressive just to get a bunch of numbers and a huge hexadecimal back. It is possible that it was randomly generated. But no, if you close the program and search for the page using the hex address and the other details, you will get the exact same text back every single time in any device. What I find most profound about the Library of Babel is not the magic surrounding it, but rather the technical feat required to bring the same to reality. Just think about it. Given a character limit of just 3200 a page and 32 unique characters, you would need to generate and store this many book combinations somewhere on this planet. Which, to be honest, seems quite wasteful and outright impossible. But there it was in front of my very own eyes. Fiction, yet so real. Before I show you my very own library of Babel, I want to emphasize the fact that this is if anything the most basic implementation you'll ever see. The few resources I did find online seemed very complicated at the time, so I decided to strip away the noise and try to make something simple on my own. I'm also only working with English characters so to claim my library contains every idea that humanity will ever produce is not true. With that being said, I did get a lot of information from David Coleman's video. So do check it out. So here's my Windows Form application. Let's start by getting the exact location of a text within our library. I type in a random text and enable the My Exact Page option and hit the Get Address button. Now I shall receive the exact location of that page in the form of a hex address and a room number and so on. Now let's do the reverse. Copy the hex address, remember the other parameters and clear everything. If I paste the hex in here and type in the other information and hit the find page button, I should get the text that I initially searched for. And there you go. So what about this other text option? Well if we check it, we'll get a number of results containing our input string. If we hit the random button, we'll get the text from a random location within our library. And of course the reverse function works for all of these. Essentially what we're doing is passing a string with a limited character set into the algorithm. What this algorithm is supposed to do is modify the incoming byte information so that the output is something entirely different from the input but at the same time retaining the input byte information in some manner so that when we feed the output into a reverse algorithm, we should be able to get the same string back no matter what. The way I did this is by using the byte information of the indices of a character set instead of the characters itself because numbers from 0 to 31 use only 5 bits compared to 7 bits for the ASCII representation of the alphabet. Now what I did inside the algorithm is pack the 5 bits into an 8-bit byte array so if my page limit is 3200 characters, I can essentially pack it into 2000 bytes. 
Each byte inside the new array now has 255 possibilities instead of just 32. So we have already modified our input without deleting the existing information. If you haven't already figured it out, I might break the sense of magic here. There is no library. What is going on here is essentially some basic encryption and a little bit of storytelling. Still, even with the new information, the claims of a library having every book ever and ever will be hasn't turned entirely false. In a sense, anything mankind will ever imagine is already out there. Now let's get back to the technical stuff. I essentially created two primary functions, search address and a find page. Let's start with the first one. Our function takes in two arguments, a string and a pad. The pad is essentially a random binary string that is two times the length of our packed bytes. The function first pads out the string to 3200 characters if the return my exact text is checked. I then padded out each byte within the byte array with leading zeros to complete a byte. This is important because during the reverse process we know exactly what our initial bytes were. I then reduced each element to be exactly 5 bits. I then joined them together as one big binary string. I then converted this string into a really big integer using this function. To get the page number we simply perform a modulo operation. Then divide the big integer by the number of pages. Then we repeat the same for the rest of our parameters. What is left of this big integer is going to be our hexadecimal address. You might have noticed a problem here and that is the repeating characters in our hex. If we show this to our user, they could make the obvious connection between the hex and the input string. We don't want that. Luckily, this can be fixed by performing a simple XOR operation. We'll XOR the packed binary string with a pad to get a new binary string. After converting it into a hex, we'll get a new and seemingly random address. For the find page function, I gave in six arguments. First, we convert our hexadecimal into its big integer relative. Then we perform the reverse operations with our page number, book number, and so on. The resulting big integer is then converted into a big binary string. To ensure that the bits are there in their right indices, I simply checked if the total length of the string was two times the packed byte array's length. If higher, I removed bits with the length of the binary string minus 16,000 from index 0. If less, I padded zeros to the left to fill the same length. Next, I performed an XOR with a pad to get the text binary back. The next steps are essentially just splitting the binary string into 8-bit bytes and then taking 5-bit bytes out of them. These 5 bits are then converted to their integer values and lastly, we create a string from the same character set using this integer as our index. Then we return the string to our user. So that's pretty much it, but what about all these other functions like show random and show results containing my text? How did I make them? Well, they are essentially calling the same two functions with different input over and over again. For the show random function, generate a random string with 3200 characters using the same character set and pass it through the search address function to get the location back. For showing different results containing your text, do the same random generation but before you pass the string into the search function, remove this many characters and insert the user input into any random index. Do this about this many times and you'll get every single possible combination. But I would recommend looping about 1400 times since anything above that seems to crash my application. So that is it. This is my library of Babo. I found this project quite challenging and because of that I learned quite a lot. It's also one of those projects that seem to have started my programming journey since I came across it 6 months ago. Back then I could only imagine solving what seemed to be a complex problem. But I did solve it. Now as I mentioned earlier, this isn't the best implementation you'll ever see and nor is it hard to crack. But it works. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.